from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Good day and welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Monsignor Sam Bianco. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from two donors. The first is Norma Robbins from Victoria, British Columbia, for the living and deceased members of her family. The second is an anonymous donor from Ottawa, Ontario, in loving memory of her husband, for the intentions of her sons and their families, and for the souls in purgatory. Our thanks to the donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family, we seek the Lord's mercy and forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Philistines gathered their armies for battle and encamped opposite the Israelites. And there came out of the Philistine camp a champion named Goliath, who challenged the Israelites to choose a man to fight him. All the Israelites, when they saw Goliath, fled from him and were very much afraid. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. David said, The Lord, who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Then he took his staff in his hand, and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield-bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. 
David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword in David's hand. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine. He grasped the Philistine's sword, drew it out of its sheath, and killed him. Then he cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. My rock and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues the peoples under me. Blessed be the Lord my rock. I will sing a new song to you, O God. Upon a ten-string harp, I will play to you. The one who gives victory to kings, who rescues his servant David. Blessed be the Lord my Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus preached the good news of the kingdom and healed all who were sick. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. The Pharisees watched Jesus to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that it might accuse him. And Jesus said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out his hand, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against Jesus how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Withered hand, hardness of heart. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in the eastern Mediterranean, just off the shores of Turkey, before you come 
directly into the Mediterranean coast, uh, an island, Cyprus exists. It's a well-known island. It has today about a million and a half people on it. It's been run over and conquered by uh, the Assyrians, the Macedonians, the Egyptians, the Romans, the Turks, the Ottoman Turks. And uh, in the last century, it was under the British mandate um, uh, for control. Um, the mandate ended after the Second World War, and the island is divided between uh, Turks and, and Greek Cypriots. It's been a place of, of, of great controversy and fighting. And it's of a special interest to those of us who are Canadians, and I appreciate um, this mass goes around the world, but uh, one of the first and largest Canadian peacekeeping forces was sent to Cyprus in, in 1964 on what is called the Green Line to keep peace between the Turks and the Greeks. And I think we have lost over 131 soldiers trying to keep peace on the island. So this island, which is very central to the Mediterranean, Mediterranean wonderful, uh, prosperous, uh, olive growing, has been a source of, of great controversy and invasions and, and counter invasions. And it, it, it has some um, deep significance. On the 3rd of December in 2021, our Holy Father Pope Francis visited uh, Cyprus to the cathedral at Nicosia, the cathedral there that in Nicosia that was under the direction of the uh, Christians who are Orthodox, because the island is divided between Muslims, Orthodox, and Catholic Christians. And he made a special visit to his beatitude, Chrysostomus II, uh, the, uh, the archbishop there. And uh, he was there on an apostolic mission. Part of the mission was because the island of Lesbos is not too far away, and he was concerned to raise attention, as the Pope always does, to immigrants. But as we are in the week of prayer for Christian unity, he also addressed in anticipation the disunity that exists among Christians and, and all the efforts we must make, first between Orthodox Christians and we Latin Christians, but also the broader people, the Muslims, the Turks, between races. And the Holy Father, as he always does, articulated very powerfully some of the principles we need to think about. And he quoted, uh, referred to the fact that one of the first apostles to Cyprus was Barnabas, and Barnabas was sent on an apostolic mission after the resurrection. And the word Barnabas means two things. It means consolation and exhortation. And the Holy Father said, for there to be unity among Christians, we have to have consolation with one another. We have to be able to understand and to sympathize and to see what are the divisions, how we got there, and, and how we might overcome them. Because without the reality of consolation, there's really no hope for Christian unity, which is necessary indeed for the world. And as always, the Pope speaks powerfully. He talks about the ex personal experience of Christ. We're used to hearing this word in other contexts. He talks about the existential reality of the experience of Jesus. And he means it directly first to we Christian Catholics as he talks about the synod. Not only is there church order, church structure, church doctrine, dogma, the experience of knowing Jesus personally, living with him, appealing to him, walking with him side by side. That's what it means to be a Christian. And so it's not only Christian Catholics who need to walk with Jesus and side by side, it's all Christians and we need to be synodal. We need to walk together, cherishing the experience of Jesus in our heart. To know Jesus and to know him personally is so very essential to the reality of what it means to be a Christian. The Pope, of course, as you know, never leaves it just at that. He always puts a cutting edge to things. And the two cutting edges he put into his talk at the Nicosia Cathedral was this. He said, are we too wealthy in the West, in the world? All the poor people, all the migrants, shouldn't we? And he begins with the Catholic Church, but all the churches, 
begin to think about divesting some of our wealth so that we can be able better to help migrants, to help people who are in suffering. Do we need all this wealth, all these resources? Or can we begin to think ecumenically of finding practical ways to use the wealth that we have, divest some of it, and to help one another? And then the added stinger he puts into it, he says, if we're going to have ecumenical relations, we've got to get rid of talking in a bad mouth way. We have to stop using language that's condemnatory or mean-spirited. Because whenever we use language that's derogatory, which hurts, which stings, that separates us and pulls us farther apart. So it's not only looking at the wealth we've got, but how we speak to one another. And as always with Pope Francis, he never speaks from a position of patronizing. He never speaks um, de haut en bas. He, he never speaks with superiority. He speaks about himself and our own church and our own weaknesses as one fellow sinner to another fellow sinner. And so he's not condemning other people. He's trying to bring people together and say, look, we're in this together, sinner to sinners. And because he does that, it opens the hearts of other people. He makes this astounding statement, or he made it on December the 3rd. There are no such things as irreconcilable differences. What an astounding statement. He says, everything must be done to get rid of differences and to know that we don't need to fear to be open. And that means not only as between religions, as between races and cultures, and between nations, everyone should make the effort to get rid of the furrows that are separating us and to try to bring us together. In a wonderful image, he says, he was on the island of Cyprus. He said, Cyprus physically can be a bridge between the East and the West. What he really hopes and what he calls for is he says, Cyprus can be the bridge between heaven and earth. And surely that's what we need these days. Something that builds bridges between people and differences and religions and races but something that gives us a sense that heaven is present to us, that it's not impossible, that differences can be overcome, that we can speak with justice and charity, with humility and love toward one another. Will you join with me, please, and we'll offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord today. For those of us in the Daily TV Mass community, you have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those asking for peace in their family, we pray to the Lord. Lord. As always, we pray for those who lack adequate food, housing, and shelter. For those persons with mental health challenges and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord we take a moment, please, to pray for our own personal intentions, for those we love and care for, and for those united with us in prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, in this week of prayer for Christian unity, draw us together in the Holy Spirit. May what unites and binds us be greater than anything that divides us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God. God. Lord God, we ask your humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash your mind again. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise the glory of his name. 
Father, of all the sweet church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praise has had nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save our Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, all the clergy and all the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed now by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let's your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My friends, I've been ordained for almost 50 years, and I was in the first class that went to an ecumenical seminary, joining together Protestant, Catholic, and Anglican. It was a great and important moment. I think some of the enthusiasm has diminished. Pray God we understand the importance of bringing together all the Christian denominations, of course, all the world, but especially so that Christ may better be proclaimed, that his mission to the world be fulfilled through all of us working together. God bless you. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Lord, who at your first Eucharist did pray that all your church might be forever one, Grant us at every Eucharist to say, with longing heart and soul, your will be done. 